the basketball. Junior serving on his way to the basket. Then dumps the ball over Bill Walsh. Julius Winfield Irving II, also known as Dr. J. Spectacular? Yes. Incredible? Definitely. Better than me? Well, I don't know about that. I'm Ken Howard, in some circles known as the White Shadow. Hey, Julius, what's the matter? Nobody give you a game? Coach told me to work on my left hand, Ken. You what? I saw you missed one. <laughs> I missed more than one before my career was Don't old. hit everything, you never get a game. How you doing? Good. Now, don't be fooled by our shaking hands. It lulls him into a false sense of security. You see, the good doctor and I are going to play some one-on-one -on -one later. I hope to emerge victorious. I don't see why not, just because he's the most exciting basketball player on earth. But watch my form. Swish. It's a beautiful thing to look at, isn't it? The doctor doesn't know what he's in for. But before he finds out, we're going to take a look at his remarkable career. Tell me about it. What's that play you one-on-one? -on -one, you understand it's all different. Because I jump so high and I move so well without the ball. You Plus, you get the dribble. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the other guys at Roosevelt High School on your team. You weren't just, uh, like, alone out there with uh, four guys trying to keep up, right? You were playing with some pretty good ball players, didn't you? Oh, I played with good guys, yeah. We had a couple of juniors who I thought had more potential than I had. You were shorter. You were 6'2", 6'3", like that, going through high school. And then yeah, when I graduated from high school, I was about 6'3 and a half. Uh -huh. Uh, during the basketball season, you know, I played at 6'2 and a half, 6'3", and uh, was thusly recruited as a 6'3 player who uh, college coaches didn't know whether they'd want to play at guard or forward. Your college coach must have had tears in his eyes as he watched you keep growing. I mean, couldn't believe it was happening to him. Well, <laughs> Just keep going, keep going, kid. <laughs> well, you know, there, hopefully there were tears of pleasure. To the delight of all University of Massachusetts partisans, Julius Irving chooses UMass and makes his presence known immediately. Julius Irving, the pass, Irving intercepts over the midcourt line. He's all alone, Irving in from the layup. Good for two. In his sophomore year, he leads the Yankee Conference in scoring and is second in the nation in rebounding. In Irving's two years with the UMass varsity, he leads them to two NIT appearances. He's going in for a layup. Here comes Irving. Irving goes up and, oh, blocks the shot. Can this kid play? Now, look, uh, let's get away from here, because later I intend to destroy you in one-on-one, -on -one, you understand. But uh, we've got some other stuff to talk about. That's All okay. Right. <laughs> That's okay. Come on. <laughs> yeah. All right, now, so, three years after you're there, you go hardship. You see, now, you're a business major, right? You've got a sense of business, you think. I was trying to develop a sense of business at that time. Yeah. And uh, so, half a million dollar contract, you're sitting down in a hotel room. I figure, kid from Long Island, 21 years old, your head's got to be spinning at this point. And what was that like? I mean, those choices and those decisions right then. Well, it was an unforgettable experience. Uh, and ironically, uh, when I met with the Virginia Squires owner, Earl Foreman, and the coach, Al Bianchi, mm -hmm. that first time it was. The doctor signs with Virginia for $500,000 over four years. The investment proves justified. He leads the ABA in scoring his second year, but then he's sold to the New York Nets. I don't anticipate having problems playing with any of the Nets. I, 
I think, uh, you know, I can play basketball with anybody as long as our objectives are the same, and that is to win. The doctor leads the Nets into the 1974 finals versus Utah. He scores a total of 92 points and three straight net victories. Irving with the basketball inside the half court line goes up. It's a 40 footer and it's oh, my, it's good. After losing game four, the Nets still need only one victory to clinch, and the doctor responds. Coach Kevin Lockery's Nets in control. Irving trying to make his move, goes left, stops, goes up with the jumper, and it's good! And the Nets win the championship! Eunice Irving comes back to New York, his hometown, and wins the championship! He couldn't ask for anything more! On the outside, it seemed like the best thing that could happen to a uh, professional athlete. Mm -hmm. um, as it turned out, uh, it, it did cause a few problems, none which stopped me from performing on the court. Some acquaintances come out of the woodwork and I treat you like you were their best friend. So uh, there was a downside to it, but the success we had uh, with the uh, New York Nets was uh, something that really has been unparalleled uh, mm -hmm. in my whole basketball career. After the 1974 season, Irving continues to amaze. He wins the ABA's Most Valuable Player in 1975 and in 1976, and brings the Nets into the ABA's last championship finals versus the Denver Nuggets. Once again, the doctor seems to perform miracles as the Nets take a 3-2 game lead. The Nets lead the series three games to two, but trail by 13 in this one. Junior serving with the basketball. Down the left side, they double him up. Tim Bassett alone underneath. Irving finds him. Oh, my, good for two. At one point, the Nets are down by 22, but they begin to fight back. They finally take the lead in the fourth quarter behind John Williamson's hot hand. Irving passes to Williamson. The jumper's up and good, and the Nets win one point. The second championship in three years. There are some nicknames in sports that describe the athlete to perfection. The Brown Bomber, the Juice, the Doctor. I asked Julius where he got the nickname Dr. J. I'm glad you asked me that because there are a lot of different stories as to how <laughs> I got the nickname yeah, it's Dr. Dr. J. And originally it was just a doctor and uh, a couple years afterwards, it became Dr. J. But back in high school, played ball all the time, almost all the time, with a friend of mine who uh, was very argumentative. And he'd get out in the playground, and no matter what happened, right or wrong, it was supposed to be his ball. He probably played with guys like that. He can go off his leg, and he'd say, no, you push me, so I got to take the ball out. <laughs> and uh, his arguments turned to lectures, at least by the time they hit my ears. So I started calling him the professor. And uh, any time I see him, I'd always give him a big greeting. I'd say, hey, professor, what's happening? <laughs> and he reciprocated one day. He said, how you doing, doctor? And so now the NBA gets to see the doctor.
Now, Julius, when you uh, showed up on the 76ers roster, they had uh, all-stars George McGinnis, Doug Collins, they had uh, Lloyd Free, the Prince of Midair, and we've been talking a lot about freedom. Now, was this inhibiting? It was very comparable to putting together a type of team that uh, Los Angeles had when it had Chamberlain, mm -hmm. West, and Baylor all playing at the same time. You know, you had three guys capable of giving a team 30 points a game or, you know, or any, any one of the guys going out and getting 50 or 60 uh, on a given night. With forward George McGinnis, sixth man Lloyd Free, and all-star guard Doug Collins playing alongside Irving, the 76ers win their division title comfortably and play their way into the finals against the Portland Trailblazers and Bill Walton. Portland boasts a strong front line. The 6'10 Walton and power forward Maurice Lucas paved the way to a four games to two Portland victory. For his part, the doctor averages 30 points a game during the series. The next year, the Washington Bullets stop the 76ers. Irving averages 22 in a losing effort. And in 1979, the San Antonio Spurs and George Gervin eliminate the Sixers. Now, Julius, fans in Philadelphia are known to be tough. I mean, they're a hard-nosed crowd. And yet, even though losing in the playoffs, you come back, and they are devoted to you. I mean, Dr. J is their hero and their leader. Bobby Jones with the ball, finds Julius serving. Drives to the basket, goes up and... Oh, an unbelievable shot! Listen to the fans! Win or lose, they just love the doctor! Now, you are an inspiring player to kids, to fans, and also to other players. And I think I always felt, you would know better than I, that, that Cunningham felt that, and that some of the trades were brilliant trades, bringing in Bobby Jones and, and opening up that offense but giving you a little bit more room. And it seemed that uh, the 76ers had it together in 79, 80. Ladies and gentlemen, now the starting lineup for the 1979-80 Philadelphia 76ers. At center, number 53, Darrell Dawkins. Number 11, Caldwell Jones! Philadelphia, here they come. Team of the year. One, two, three, four, five. At guard, number 10, Maurice Cheeks. That's the other guard. Number 9, Lionel Holland. And at forward, number 6, Julius the 76ers win 59 games for the season, beat the Washington Bullets in the opening round of the playoffs, and go on to defeat the Atlanta Hawks in the quarterfinals. Next, they face their long-standing rival, the Boston Celtics, in the semifinals. Julius moving on Larry Bird. He's by Bird. Left hand, right hand. Spinball. Up for the sensational field goal by Julius Irvin. The 76ers win the Boston series in five games, pausing only briefly for a celebration before the final series. The final series features Irving and the 76ers against Jabbar and the Lakers. Both players play brilliantly in the first four games, and the series is tied in two games apiece. Then in the fifth game, the lead changes hands throughout. Cooper trying to get the ball inside of Jabbar. He does. Kareem puts it on the floor, moves on Paul Rowe Jones, up and good, and then he tumbles over the line. Kareem got hurt in that fifth, uh, game? fifth game in L.A. and uh, went out for the eight-minute stretch. But uh, they held their own, and uh, when he came back, it you know, became a uh, one-point basketball game in which we lost. And then when we came back home, we were playing too tied up. But Magic Johnson ruins the 76ers chances with one of the greatest games in playoff history. Magic scores 42 points, 
and teammate Jamal Wilkes adds 37 to give the Lakers the 1980 championship. They didn't have their big guy, and they had nothing to lose. And obviously, uh, Magic, you know, played the uh, best game of his pro career. That's your word, freedom again. And, and uh, they were wide open. He didn't have anything to lose, and, <laughs> and he looked good in, in, uh, in doing that. And, and Jamal played his best game of the season. Now, in the 80-81 season, you had a terrific year, you and all of the 76ers. Then you had the Celtics down 3-1 the optimum situation you've talked about, where you're free to just go in and blow them away. Definitely the, the pressure should have been on them, and uh, they responded well to it. Score at 89. Bird's going to put it up. Here's a long jumper by Bird and a back shot. Cheeks' free throw has pulled the 76ers to within one. Here's Tiny Archibald with the ball for Boston. The clock ticking off. Over to Carr. Open jump shot for ML. Shot is up and won't go to the scramble for the rebound. Caldwell Jones has the hand on it. Bounces the ball loose, and it comes up to Bobby Throw. Jones with the ball, timeout, one second left. Bobby Jones will put the ball in play. Here's the high lob pass to the baseline, intended for Julius Erwin. He cannot get it. I don't think anyone should take away from uh, what the Celtics were capable of achieving right. by saying Philadelphia choked or, or what have you. You don't go and act like an ostrich and stick your head in a hole and hide. You uh, do the things you have to do in the offseason, and you come back with a, uh, a more mature perspective and a, and a good attitude and dedicate yourself right. to uh, what you have to do. I want you to know something now, Julius. I want to see the 76ers win. I want to see you lead them to victory. So when we go in the gym and play one-on-one, -on -one, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to take it easy on you. You're going to take it easy on me? I won't go up over you and slam too much, because you, know, <laughs> you could get hurt. And you're aging, not like You're me, not going to go you know, around me either? I won't, no, I won't beat you going either way, but only because it's my choice. You understand this? I too. might want to pass on this game. <laughs> if, you, if you're just going to lay down, we don't want that. We'd like to earn it. This is it, the showdown. The showdown. What am I, crazy? He'll destroy me. How can I beat Dr. J? I gotta be cool. Are you ready for this? Ken Reeves. Here we go again. Former Chicago Bull, average six points a game. Another one. Now to coach at Carver High. Are you ready for that? Is he serious? Eyes are Reeves. Ox. I'm wall. Winners take out. First mistake, yep. What did I say? Winners take out. Winners okay. take out. Okay. Check. Check. Okay, the game's only five. Maybe I can get lucky and stop him somehow. Hey, maybe not. Come on, Ken. Tough defense now. Stay with him. You got him. No, no, you don't. Hey, lose it. Doc is really serious about this. Freeze him. I gotta stop him somehow. I know. I'll make him shoot from 25 feet. Wonderful. Pause him. I'll break his concentration. Come on, Julius. Make him laugh. Aha! It worked. All right, it's my ball. I can just make one shot on the great Dr. J. Huh? Please, please. Aha! Yes, maybe now I'll have some respect. I guess not. Well, I guess I showed you. <laughs> Julius Winfield Irving II. Man of a thousand moves. Irving, the most spectacular player in basketball history. Dr. 
richard j.